Welcome everybody to Gallery One Mendels. My name is Nick Mayor, and I'm very pleased to present to you uh, Isaac Julian. Isaac, welcome. We have here your fourth solo uh, presentation, which is incredible. We're so thrilled to have you back here again with us with this beautiful presentation on a well, very specific figure, Frederick Douglass. Um, can you tell us a bit about him and his life and what inspired you uh, to create this series? Well, Frederick Douglass, um, in some ways, needs no introduction, I guess, to American audiences. Right. Um, but obviously, to European audiences, I think he is someone that needs a little introduction. <laughs> so, um, Frederick Douglass, he was an abolitionist, a freedom fighter. Um, he was also a great orator, um, very much influenced by Shakespeare. Okay. He was also a philosopher of photography. In fact, he was the most photographed man of the 19th century in the United States, more so than President Lincoln of, of the time. Wow. And he basically became famous because he wrote an um, autobiography of his life as a slave. And when it was released, um, he became so famous, actually, that he was really um, threatened with being re-enslaved because he was a fugitive slave. Anna Marie Douglas, his wife, which you see here in the photograph, was a freed black, and she was able to aid him in his freedom, um, escaping slavery. But um, he was someone who was an very important leader, very vocal, and at the time to save his family and himself, he had to flee from America and he came to England and made Scotland his kind of main home between um, sort of 1984, um, 87 kind of time. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, he basically became very, very famous in um, the UK, and um, I guess the rest is history. You know, he's now seen as a very important figure, iconic figure, um, specifically in America. And his story is starting to get known by a new generation in the UK as well. Right, incredible. Yeah. And as you mentioned, we're standing here in front of Frederick Douglass, at least uh, um, yeah, the, the, the film you created and the photographic series that we're showing here, yeah. next to his first wife, Anne-Marie Marie Douglas. Um, they're sitting clearly in a, a train cabin. And the train, I mean, this, this, this work is called North Star. Um, there was also a, a, a double meaning to that, not only title, but only this, this image. Could you tell a bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, in a way, kind of North Star is, um, in a way, begins a series because it basically um, re-dramatizes um, Anna Marie Douglas's first wife and, of course, um, Mr. Douglas um, in a carriage. And in a way, the work is referencing um, works like um, the, Fla the First Class Carriage from Daumier, um, and also imbuing it with a kind of different meaning because, of course, Anna Marie Douglas um, was, in a sense, the queen of the Underground Railroad. Both Douglas and Anna Marie Douglas participated in the freeing of many black um, African Americans from slavery through this kind of secret passage, um, which basically involved this kind of journeying um, into emancipation, um, where they would sort of, you know, look after people who were fugitive slaves, who were escaping slavery, wow. um, and would be part of this very special network, which is called the Underground um, Railroad. Maybe some of you have seen Barry Jenkins' new film, um, which really goes into a wonderful um, exploration of that um, whole moment in a more poetic sense. And in this work, you know, as you see, they're kind of looking north, I think. <laughs> Maybe south, I'm not quite sure. And um, they're looking out into the carriage, and you can see they're looking out with some form of, you know, meditation or 
you, there's hope some almost. hope yeah. or and so in a way i see them as being in unison um in their kind of um if you like struggle but also at the same time they're in this kind of first class carriage and right. so kind of i mean douglas when he first came to scotland um you know and this happens in the beginning of the film we see him sort of in the carriage and he's sort of you know um of course allowed to sit in the carriage mm -hmm. you know it's not um apartheid you know as no. it was segregated in the, in the states um and so this is a kind of reimagined scene pictorially you know they're in red you know right. against the blue and so i'm looking at a lot of sort of painting um, from this period and thinking about the use of colour um, and decor and costumery. And this is a kind of um, work which has a lot of people involved in its production. Right. And so, um, in a way, it encapsulates a, a whole kind of bond in this sort of, you know, holding of hands in unison, um, which they, in a sense, were at the forefront of because right. of, of course Doug, um, Douglas and um, Annie Murray and the whole family also produced a newspaper called the North Star exactly. and that was the first right. emancipation document um, newspaper um, which was widely read in North America right. and also made Frederick Douglas quite famous of course. Incredible at that time especially. You were speaking about um, uh, Frederick Douglass's time in Europe and in uh, Scotland and Ireland. Maybe we can move on to the next image here where you can see him yeah. in that incredible landscape. So how important was his time in, in, in Europe and in Scotland? What exactly um, yeah, did he do in his time there? Well, he was in Scotland between 1845 to 1847. And it was in Scotland where um, Frederick um, Bailey became Frederick Douglas. So okay. he changed his name, um, very much inspired by Sir Walter Scott's work, um, epic poem, Lady of the Lake. He was very into um, English literature. He had mastered English literature, um, all the sonnets at that time, both Shakespearean um, and also Scottish literature, Robert Burns. And he made Edinburgh um, his home. Um, and this work, um, which is actually called Lessons of the Hour, is a pivotal work because it's a work where basically we see Douglas basically almost in his Quaker moment, because he's also embracing Quakerism and thinking about nature, thinking about it in relationship to animals. He had a very specific relationship, philosophical relationship to animals, um, which in a way came out of his relationship to slavery, okay. where to a certain extent horses um, were treated better actually than actual Precise. slaves. And so in a way, at the same time, he really detested the ill treatment of animals um, and horses in particular, right. which he had a particular bond with. And so um, this is at, um, you know, the very famous location of Arthur's seat in Edinburgh. So mm -hmm. it's a very famous location, it's a very iconic location. And I've just imagined him in this pastoral scene, basically thinking about his role. He's very far away from his family and at the same time, there's this moment of autonomy that he has, you know. So um, this image, um, as I said, is a pivotal image in the work. And right. um, so we gave it the title um, of, of the, the whole hour. work, Lessons yeah. of the Hour. And That's, in your research uh, coming up to this, uh, to the film, but also the photographic series, were you able to um, uh, come about a lot of the photographs of uh, original photographs of Frederick Douglass? As you mentioned, he is one, was the most photographed uh, uh, person of the 19th century. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a huge catalogue resume, a right. wonderful book on the pictorial history of Frederick Douglass, yeah. um, which was made amongst um, other books. But this one was really important. Um, he never ever smiled, um, 
in his relationship to the way that he's utilizing photography as, as both an art form, but also as a, a sort of, um, if you like, tool to repurpose the image of the African-American away from um, the stereotypical representations, which were amassed on um, the whole sort of field of um, re repertoire of images which were being produced at that time. Right. Um, so he was very much sort of, you know, seeking agency in right. photography. And yeah. he saw photography as an emancipatory tool that would remodel um, the sort of, um, s sort of ways in which um, sort of black people were being represented at that, t at that time. Yeah, right. and so um, photography for him was a very important, powerful art form right. towards emancipation. Yeah. Yep. Speaking about photography and of course the role of uh, portraiture in uh, Frederick Douglass's work, that links us to the next installation that we have on photography with another very famous photographer as well. This is quite an interesting installation here, uh, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been uniquely made for um, this um, sort of European premiere of the work. Mm -hmm. And uh, the work that we have here is called Serenade. Um, it has Frederick Douglass, of course, <laughs> as the center of the image. Um, and he's been flanked um, right and left by J.P. Bohr, James Priestley Bohr, who was a really important African-American photographer who was um, very important at the time, um, was also involved in the Underground Railroad, was an abolitionist, but he was an incredibly um, successful photographer. He, he even took photographs of people like Queen Victoria in England wow. and Charles Dickens. So he was really very, very um, eminent. At the center stage um, of photography. And yeah. this is his wife um, on the left. And as you'll see, this image is of them in a mirror. And then you have like the frame. So it's all about the sort of self representation um, of these figures. And it's presented here in this kind of um, presentation where we see several um, found images which are of the period, which are from my archive in the kind of research of the work. Um, and it's behind um, or displayed on this Lina Babadi structure from 1961. Lina Babadi is another artist who I made a work with, more or less at the same time, who invented new ways of um, displaying works in museum contexts. And behind is this blue curtain, which links, of course, to his coat. Right. Um, of course, someone like Frederick Douglass was very sutorally kind of at the <laughs> forefront of fashion in his image and this use of colour um, becomes a kind of symbolic colour in relationship to thinking about the blues, thinking about questions of mourning and also sutorally um, it gives this kind of fantasiaco aspect right. um, to um, the installation. Um, which has been especially done here for this presentation. Amazing. And as we will move on to the film a bit, uh, in a bit, I think it's also interesting to see not only in the film, but also in this presentation, that you link the contemporary to uh, the older scenes. And that is an important aspect in your work. You, you frame that, you reframe that, and that's what you're doing physically here, but also in the film. And how does that work for you in that sense how does that how important is that to you to um, express that in your work um in relationship to questions around time exactly. and temporality yeah. i'm really interested in linking the past to the present as a way of commenting on the future of course when i made this work in 2000 um in 2019 um it was sort of if you like before the whole Black Lives Matter incident, um, it was in a way um, thinking about these questions around um, um, equality 
and um, questions of civil, civil liberties and thinking about that in relationship to the histories which are part of um, the sort of black diaspora. And, but I was also interested in Douglas as someone who was a kind of philosopher, a right. great orator, who was really interested in art and, you know, was someone at the forefront of so many things. And so... Yeah. Um, it is so important to make that connection between the past, the present. Well, yeah. I think it's really important to make the link between the past and the present because we're so imbued with these histories, yeah. even though we like to think of ourselves being the 21st century, mm -hmm. we still have a, a few 19th century predicaments, I think, that haunt us in the 21st century. Yeah. Um, so we're still in, I would say, um, the sort of, if you like, um, position of really trying to look and pay attention um, to these questions and to see that they have these historical linkage to the past. And perhaps they might even have keys to us thinking about the future. And so this is obviously one of the themes in my work. So. Yeah. We are extremely proud, Isaac, to be able to present the single screen uh, version of Lessons of the Hour, Frederick Douglass, for the first time, a world premiere. That is amazing. Um, before we walk into the, the, the video installation, we have one work, Rapture, um, really amazing work, just starting uh, at the start of the film. Um, where we see Frederick Douglass again in this seemingly beautifully romantic scene. Um, what does this scene and work exactly uh, mean in relation to uh, the film? Well, the, this work um, is titled Rapture. Um, in a sense, it encapsulates um, Frederick Douglass's observation of nature, his observing of Quaker kind of rituals of being one with nature, observing nature, being quiet with nature. And of course, it has a certain sublimity in terms of it being this kind of pictorial pastoral scene with the tree. But of course, these trees represent different kinds of histories, right. depending on who looks at them. So I think embodied within it is also this question of sublimity and perhaps some notion of something else, another history, um, which we kind of allude to in the beginning of the film where Douglas imagines um, a certain violence that gets connected to um, this kind of nature, you know. But I think also for me, like pictorially, I just like this sort of you know, use of his sartorial kind of clothing to the back. It has a certain enigmatic aspect to it, a certain mystery. Um, the use of the wood landscape um, connected to the frame and all of these sorts of things come together in this yeah. image um, for me in terms of um, its making yeah. pictorially. <laughs> <laughs> yes, incredible. Wonderful. Well, let's uh, move on to the uh, video installation room, please. Okay. All right. I am now, as you will perceive by the date of this letter, in old Scotland. Almost every hill, river, mountain, and lake of which has been made classic by the heroic deeds of her noble sons. Scarcely a stream or a hill that is not associated with some fierce and bloody conflict between liberty and slavery.
It's great to see this new piece, this assemblage. Here. First time assemblage this yeah. is, yes. And it's also great to have um, Helen Pitts, who was his second wife. Right. Um, I think that's an important story. She was an abolitionist and someone who was also kind of freedom fighter. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly what she was doing. And because of her, we kind of, in a way, have Frederick Douglass's legacy today. Thanks yeah. to her. And then we have these posters from the Scottish premier, all Douglas quotes, instead of blue sky of America, I'm covered in soft gray fog. Amazing. Scotland is all a blaze of anti-slavery excitement. Right. And then we have, of course, to, uh, sir, to a start, a seer which continues Douglas's relationship to horses in particular. Okay. So Isaac, here we have an installation of both photography and the film of one of your first projects, one of your first films from 1983, Who Killed Colin Roach? Mm. Um, also a premiere for the first time presented as such. What can you tell us about that first project and how important is that to you to show it here now? Well, one of the interesting things about making Lessons of the Hour Frederick Douglass, um, at the time when we were editing the work, um, I came across in my archive these images which are presented here. Um, and they are from a film which I made in 1983 called mm -hmm. Who Could Colin Roach? And I think one of the things which resonated to me about that very early work that I made while I was an art student at St. Martin's School of Art was this was a film which was about the death of a young man, a young black man in a police station in North London. And the black community's response to that was to campaign for an independent inquiry into that death. Right. Of course, they never got that independent inquiry. Um, it was never served, it was never solved who um, had sort of murdered um, Colin Roach. And in a way, this very much resonated, I think, with Black Lives Matter. But this work was made in 2019. So in a sense, it very much is in this kind of mood. Um, and I was connecting that, if you like, mood to the making of Lessons of the Hour, that there's still lessons to be learned. And we can join those lessons um, in Douglas's time in the 19th century to this time in the 80s and our current moment. Exactly. Um, and so we're still in this moment of reconciliation, of coming to terms with questions of violence, which have visited upon certain communities. And in a way, this is both a kind of memorial um, to the fact that Mrs. Roach, who died this year, oh, wow. um, and her husband, who's no longer with us, uh, in a way, kind of basically um, being kind of remembered in this work, um, along with this film, which is my first film that I made. And it just felt it was important to connect the two works. Um, so I do see Lessons of the Hour and this work as being connected. But of course, it's a kind of different aesthetic. It's a Absolutely. very kind of, in a way, almost back to school, back to art school, you know. <laughs> um, but I think it feels, you know, kind of very strong in this presentation. And I think it is an important history um, that links to the question for equality um, that Douglas was so um, sort of important in sort of organizing um, that this question of um, inequality and how, um, you know, black people are treated, you know, in the diaspora is still a question. And I think it's something that we need to, um, in a way, look at um, in a little bit more detail. So this collage, um, you know, all photographs which I took in 1982 and I thought this kind of salon hang um, with the video is, a very, is the first time that I've shown both pieces together like this. So right. it's, a, it's a kind of premiere or unique presentation for um, the gallery connected to um, Lessons of the Hour. Yeah. Incredible. 
Well, Isaac, thank you so much. Thank you for being here and explaining more uh, about your work in this tour. Um, the exhibition runs until the 17th of October. We welcome you from this weekend on um, during the opening and then um, yeah, feel free to stop by and uh, enjoy these uh, very interesting and important works by Isaac Julian. Thank you.